Discovery and welcome to another episode of Discovery. We have another big week for you. First of all, I'm going to give you the newly released singles that I have been checking out this week. So the first uh, band I checked out was Subs, The Depths of Selfishness. <laughs> This is a black metal band and I really love the tremolo picking throughout this song and not only that, the atmosphere, this is a Venezuelan black metal band that really does it right, especially those vocals, those vocals are very dynamic, I love his high shrieks and overall it's a really tidy case this song. Some proggy elements throughout and overall it's, it's just a really hard energetic black metal song. And Salbs is definitely going to release an album later this year, which I will definitely be checking out. But what an amazing single, Depths of Selfishness was. The next band was Black Altar, Juice in Versus. <laughs> This is another black metal band and yet it's a very proggy sort of song. I love the drawings, quick guitar solos, incorporating elements of doom metal. What I love about this song is his vocals. His vocals are very demonic and quite aggressive, but it has that visceral feel that you get from a black metal song. This overall is a really cool song. I love the tremolo picking. really reminds me of bands such as Maguire, especially with the tremolo moments. And it just has so much energy and it's just such a fun enjoyable song to listen to. Black Altar is also going to release an album later this year. <laughs> then we go to a very strange song called Imperial Triumphant and their song Rotted Futures. <laughs> Sort of a progressive death metal song you could say there are so many different sounds i do enjoy his vocals they're quite demonic and conveys a lot of emotion towards the listener it's got some really hard hitting moments as well interesting synth overlays throughout the song of course it really dives into the deep end and it makes the listener think what the fuck am I listening to? Again, a pretty interesting song overall. One of my least favorite song of the singles I checked out, but damn, it's still packed a pun. I still definitely listen to the album. <laughs> so, Soilwork released a new song called Death Diviner. Oh, okay, so this song is a very cool song. I just love the chord progression throughout that chorus and his vocals are really good. Angelic at times incorporates harsher vocals throughout the conclusion of the song. I love the guitar moments, the intricate guitar patterns and the drumming as well. Some really nice drum fills throughout this song. It's a really cool song though. And I love how melodic it is. I have heard this countless times now and I really love this song overall. This is Soilworks brand new single as well. So looking forward to the new album that they might release this year. <laughs> with newly released albums this week and let's start off with our pirate metal it's Ailstorm Cursed of the Crystal Coconut this album is a very fun album it really is this is probably one of the silliest albums Ailstorm have made but damn it's a fun fucking album it really is talking about it. alligators chomp chomp you got really silly lyrics you got zombies ate my pirate ship and those lyrics the lyrics are so damn fucking funny and it's just a really enjoyable album I loved it and I really enjoy all Ailstorm albums so in my opinion they can't do anything wrong it's a fun fucking album and the wooden leg part two is is just a fantastic song incorporating blast beats throughout the introduction instrumentals are on fire I really love the guitar solos throughout these songs <laughs> It's 
just a really fun album to sink your teeth in and I, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of reviews saying they don't like it, that they don't actually like this album. I don't know why. It, is it because you don't like fun? It must be, it must be because you don't like fun. This album is a fucking banger. So then we move on to Sentinex, an album that I was going to talk to you about last week, but I didn't have time. We're talking about Death in Pieces. <laughs> This is a death metal band, melodic death metal band, you could say. Really reminds me of bands such as At The Gates. I do love how free-flowing this album is. It's quite a short album, but it packs a punch, especially the guitar riffs throughout this album. And overall, it's such a visceral, intense album, and it's a really fun album as well. The guitar solos throughout some of these songs, the drum fills, and the blackened atmosphere they create. It's a very dark and evil album to listen to. The set next really holds true to that really gritty death metal that you come to really enjoy. I think this is definitely one of the best albums of the week in my opinion, but I'd still give this a solid 6.5 out of 10. So now we are going to dance because we are reviewing Lady Gaga's Chromatica. <laughs> I bet you didn't expect that. Don't Yeah, of course I checked out Chromatica. Everyone's checked out Chromatica. And what can I say about this album? Lady Gaga finally releases an album after I think three years after her previous hit album, which was Joanne. Joanne was a really good album. I really enjoyed it. Alternative country pop, you could say. But damn, Lady Gaga, Chromatica. I was pretty impressed with this album. I really was. This is a concept album. The lyrics hit really deep. Uh, one thing I do have a problem with this album is the production. The production seems very thin. I wanted the production to be a bit more punchy, have more synthy moments, but it does remind me of 80s pop. 80s pop or something like that. But the lyrics on the other hand are very good. They are very good. It's a concept album. It's about her dealing with drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. There's a really good collaboration with Alton John as well. I lost myself. Under the light when I was young. Fantastic song, it really is, and I love that conclusion of the song. And Alvin John's vocals are really good. I bet you didn't expect that on Discovery. So now we move on to Grave Digger, Fields of Blood. Fields of Blood, our soul rise from the end. This is a heavy metal band, incorporate elements of thrash. But damn, this is a very enjoyable album. I love the guitar solos, love his vocals as well. And it's just a hard hitting, energetic album. Fields of Blood is like a 10 minute song. Enjoyable album. United we stand in amazing grace. It's, it's a pretty long album. It still packs a punch towards the listener. You get some really fast paced songs, some really soft songs as well, some symphonic elements throughout some of these songs. But again, it's a very tight and cohesive album by Gravedigger and Fields of Blood. We'll give this a solid 8 out of 10. So then we lead on to Akarash, Descend to Pur Purity. Part love, find love. This album a little bit torn up. The corporate elements of death, doom, doom metal, and even death metal, and at times have that blackened sort of atmosphere, but this album doesn't really do much for me. What I really wanted for this album is that the vocals, the vocals are a little bit disappointing in my opinion. They're really low in the mix. The overall balancing, the production is not very good. Not very good on this album. I do want to see some more intricate guitar work by Akarash, but Descent to Purity was a little bit of a disappointing album. And this was one of the first albums I heard this week. And I said, oh damn, this is a downer, especially for this week's albums. I do like some of these songs, but they don't go nowhere. I do really enjoy the atmosphere at times, but they do it completely wrong. For Akarash Descend to Purity, I will give this a 3.5 out of 10. I would definitely still recommend you this album if you want to check it out. But yeah, in my opinion, I didn't really enjoy it. 
So then we go to Bleed From Within Fracture, a metalcore album. This album is intense, it's in your face, and there are some amazing breakdowns. I really love his harsh vocals. He incorporates some cleaner vocals as well. The guitar work throughout this album is fantastic, and overall there's some nice technical moments. It's a really enjoyable album. Fracture on breakdowns is just whoa. It's just in your face. It just reminds you of bands like Parkway Drive. If you like fucking Parkway Drive, you're gonna fucking well love Bleed From Within. So then we lead on to the best album of this week. It's Sorcerer, Lamenting of the Innocent. <laughs> Epic doom metal album incorporating elements of power metal at times, but just imagine this sounds a lot like Candlemas and maybe the Headless Cross Black Sabbath years, in my opinion. It's got some really interesting melodies. It's a concept album, all about witches' trials, and I, I love the story of this album. It, there's just so much juicy goodness on this album. Amazing guitar solos. His vocals are really good as well. There's some soft songs, there's some hard-hitting songs. At times they incorporate heavy metal elements. It's just a very fun and enjoyable album. And what I love about this album overall is how intense this album is at times. This album's about an hour long, so it's a quite a long album. The preachers it's the words of heaven and glory. The lyrics are amazing. I'm not gonna spoil the ending of this concept album, but damn, it's a very enjoyable album and social lamenting of the innocent, no doubt be in my top 10 of this month. We'll give this a solid 8.5 out of 10. So now we go to the albums I've explored this week. And now we move on to Warbringer, Worlds Torn Asunder. <laughs> In case you don't know, Warbringer are a fresh metal band they just released an album called weapons of tomorrow which was just a fantastic thrash metal album one of the best thrash metal albums of the year so then i decided to check out worlds torn asunder my god this album hits hard this band reminds me of power trip it's like this band can't do anything wrong it's just amazing thrash metal and this album is just no different the lyrics are strong his vocals are amazing it's just such a hard-hitting, energetic album that you just can't help but enjoy. I love the guitar work, I love the solos. It's an 8.5 out of 10, fantastic album. So then we lead on to Napalm Death. The code is red, long live the code. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this. I think this is one of the best Napalm Death albums, in my opinion. It's got grindcore, it's got death metal. There are some really interesting, cool songs. I love the melodies, I love Barney's vocals. Drumming on this album is just fantastic. This is a really fun album. I just love those grindcore elements. It's like Napalm Death went away from the experimental side through diatribes and moved on to such a energetic grindcore album such as Death Decode is Red, Long Live Decode. It's like Napalm Death were really good, especially in the early 2000s, and this album is no different. I really enjoyed this album. I think this was one of the best Napalm Death albums I heard, and I'm gonna give this a 8.5 out of 10. Then we move on to Sargeist, the rebirth of the cursed existence. <laughs> black metal album now there's some really good songs on this album what the problem is this album is way too fucking long for its own good it's an hour and 15 minutes i think there's like 14 songs it's just mediocre black metal it really is there's nothing really that grabs me like i can listen to meg cognitum for like over an hour but if I listen to this, it seems like it's forever. The Sarkis Rebirth for Cursed Existence, it was nothing really special. I will give this a 4.5 out of 10. We move on to Eslaved, Blood Him. <laughs> Die, 
This album is black metal, as you expected. Some really nice clean vocals as well throughout this album. I love how hard hitting this album is overall. Surely you don't get longer long songs like like the songs from Aud. This album still really packs a punch. It's very atmospheric. It's such a journey to listen to. For Enslaved Bloodhem, I will give this a 9 out of 10. Then we move on to one of the first ever Funeral Doom albums, and this is Winter Into Darkness. <laughs> This album was released back in the 90s, where this band may have pioneered Funeral Doom, we don't know. But this album is very doomy, it's very slow pace, his vocals are really good. But what's interesting about this is that this album is just okay, it's just an okay album. There's not many magical moments throughout this album. The production is very thin, it's not very good. What really lacks is the instrumentals. The instrumentals aren't very good. You don't get amazing, you don't get amazing moments like Ahab gives you amazing moments, or even Hood and Menace gives you amazing moments. It's just straight old funeral doom, and it's pretty boring. So for Winter Into Darkness, we'll give this just an okay five. We moved on to another enslaved album, Madrom. <laughs> And this is when Enslaved really changed their sound, they incorporate elements of black metal, but progressive metal, it's a very proggy album. But what I feel is that this album does lack direction, because it's not as tight and cohesive as Bloodhem, or even Aud, or even the masterpiece album Frost. It still sounds like Enslaved, there are still some really awesome black metal moments, but this album just loses direction in my opinion. I believe this album will grow on me and it will slowly grow on me. But for Enslaved Marjoram, we'll give this just an 8 out of 10. So guys, that's it for Discovery. I hope you did enjoy this week. Comment below what albums you're going to check out. Or let me know in the comments if you've heard any of these albums as well. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you drop a like. And subscribe if you want. And I will see you in the next discovery. Free, 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 free,